My name is Dr. Catherine Lucero. I'm an assistant professor of medicine at Weill Cornell Medicine at New York Presbyterian, and I'm a transplant hepatologist at the Center for Liver Disease and Transplantation. Today I'm going to talk to you about screening and management of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. So today we will talk about the effects of fat on the liver, definitions of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, and the screening tests for fatty liver disease, as well as treatment options. The liver is the primary place of cholesterol and fat metabolism, and normally fat does not deposit in the liver. However, there are many stressors of the liver that can lead to fatty changes, such as alcohol or non-alcoholic causes, known as non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Some of the non-alcoholic causes are overnutrition, meaning taking in more than what is necessary, which can lead to obesity or the metabolic syndrome. Starvation can cause this, certain medications, certain infections such as HIV or hepatitis C. Celiac disease can cause this, and there are some rare genetic causes. And with the non-alcoholic causes, there can be either benign steatosis or just simple fat in the liver, or there can be inflammation known as non-alcoholic steatohepatitis or NASH. And non-alcoholic steatohepatitis is a leading cause of cirrhosis or liver damage. It's estimated that up to 30% of adults and up to 10 to 15% of children have non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. It's estimated that up to 5% of adults have hepatitis related to fatty liver, known as NASH. It's the most common cause of elevated liver tests. And why is this disease important? Versus the general population, Patients with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease are 1.5 times more likely to die and two times more likely to have a heart attack or stroke. In addition, it's expected to be the leading indication for liver transplantation in the next decade. So how do we screen for non-alcoholic fatty liver disease? The assessment should really start with the primary care doctor to assess for being overweight, or obese because there are no defining symptoms for non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. In addition, it's also important to rule out significant alcohol use. Blood tests can be performed to assess for inflammation of the liver and to evaluate how the liver is functioning. Imaging tests can look for fat in the liver or signs of end-stage liver disease or damage known as cirrhosis. 
The gold standard is a liver biopsy to assess for damage in addition to inflammation related to fat in the liver. So what is the treatment for non-alcoholic liver disease? The mainstay is weight loss and exercise. And it's estimated that if one can lose two to three percent of body weight, there can be some reversal of fat in the liver. Or if there is inflammation, one needs to lose about 10% of body weight to reverse inflammation from fat in the liver. Bariatric surgery or bypass surgery as a weight loss measurement has had very promising data to support use for treatment for non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. There are no current FDA approved medical treatments for non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. However, there are numerous clinical trials in progress, and we are performing some of them at New York Presbyterian. In conclusion, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is very common, affecting up to 30% of the population. The difficult scenario is that patients may have no symptoms, so really the key is recognizing it in the primary care office. Unfortunately, patients with fatty liver disease may be at risk for progression to end-stage liver disease or cirrhosis. Current treatment options, aside from diet and weight loss, are limited. However, there are clinical trials underway to find a cure, and we are currently enrolling patients at New York Presbyterian. I thank you for your time.